my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And in case you couldn't figure out, I'm wearing today's tutorial. This is a Granny Mobius cowl that also is convertible. And I'm very excited to show you this. It's nothing terribly new or innovative or revolutionary, but I really love it and I figured out the stitch count and everything so I'm really happy that I can show you how to do this. It's so easy once you get into the swing of things. You can make one in a weekend, no problem. It's sort of a one skein wonder because you can make one with pretty much just one skein of yarn depending of, of course on uh, your stitch count and so forth, but I love it. Absolutely love how this came out. Now this one uh, that I made was with ice yarns and I mean the colorway is to die for isn't it this is merino batik and uh, this is not sponsored by the way uh, it is a number two fine weight of yarn it is let me see uh 30 percent merino wool and 70 percent acrylic it is so soft oh my gosh um, and yardage. Do we have yardage on here? Looking for yardage. And I'm not seeing it. So that being said, it's nice stuff. Um, and this I'd gotten ages ago, so I don't even remember how much it was, but it's at the ice.com or ice yarn website at any rate. So this was my first attempt and it is really really simple now as far as a, a mobius is concerned it is a, a loop but it's got a built-in twist to it and as opposed to just a cylindrical tube it has the twist which when you put it over your neck and then you scooch it on up you also have a really cool hood absolutely love it and the the length of the entire cowl it actually covers the back of my neck and it turns into a really cool hood so simple love it and it's got a really neat built-in twist at the neck so it's going to keep you nice and toasty woasty and so this was the actual second attempt that i did the first attempt was with this was Lion Brand's Mondoa Tweed, if I'm not mistaken. So since it's not on my neck, you can actually see a little bit better um, how it is a tube, but it has a built-in twist to it. So there's no right side, wrong side. You just keep going and going and going. So if I put this on, I will show you. So we've got ourselves, it's nice, it's floofy, it's got that great twist to it. And so this is a slightly thicker yarn. This is a weight of four yarn, and I used fewer chain stitches for my initial setup. Now, again, doing the hood, just sort of scooch it on up, get yourself situated and adjusted, and it is just as lovely. So whether you want a, a cowl or a hood, and again, this covers the back of my neck entirely, and this didn't even use an entire skein of the Mandala Tweed. And I love how it came out. Now, I don't recall uh, what colorway this is, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? I, I want to say this might have been a uh, white elephant, but I don't think so. Sorry, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this was my first attempt, and today we are going to be using Ferris Wheel by Lion Brand. Again, not sponsored, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I use. And this is such a gorgeous colorway that I couldn't resist. This is a weight of four, so we're going to be using the larger sized hook. I'm going to be using a size J, which... I have right here. So I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter hook. 
That's me personally. You can use whatever it is that you feel like using by all means. Um, and it is the colorway of Full Moon. And it is 270 yards. And the recommended hook size is a size H. I like to go bigger because I like to be very nice and loose and drapey, personal preference. And uh, now as far as your initial chain length, okay, as far as the initial chain length, well, you have yourself some options. Now, there's nothing particularly set in stone except for the multiple. That is important. You need a multiple of four plus one. So that being said, in order for the, the granny pattern to work. Now, what I did, I already set up my chain. I didn't connect it yet because I wanted to show you about that. But um, what I did was I did my multiple of four plus one, and then I checked just by holding it together to see, is it long enough? And it is. Now, this is about, I think, 28 inches in length and you don't want it to be too tight otherwise you won't be able to get enough fabric and have the twist in there it'll be very very snug um, again it's a matter of personal preference but for me this length worked out just fine for me so you don't want it to be really drooping down past your stomach no 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 you want to have it to about mid chest i would say that that would be i think a good standard now, of course, if you're using a thinner weight of yarn, you're going to need to make more chains. For this, I made with the weight of four yarn. It's a thin weight of four, but it's a weight of four yarn. And the J-hook, I did a total of 81 chains. And this worked out for me. Now, for the finer weight of yarn, the Merino Batik, I used 101 chains. It's still a multiple of four plus one. So whether it's 81 or 101, as long as it is a multiple of four plus one chain, you got it. And it's a matter of personal preference. You might want it to be really more close fitting and more snug, although it might be more difficult uh, as far as uh, incorporating the, the twist in there and it's still being comfortable around your neck. Now, the reason why I say that is because you need it to be long enough now you're starting in the center and you're working your way outwards and so this is the the length of it and you need a lot of these rounds in order to be able to have it convert into a hood so that it not only covers the back of your neck but also fits to about here so you need a good amount of length going on now to accommodate the length, you also need the, the circumference, which is why you should be to about like here or so with the length of it. Otherwise, yes, it's going to get all constricted and we don't want it, we don't want it to be constricted. So that being said, we're going to get into the good stuff, but I wanted to give you a, a rundown as to the method to the madness as far as measurements, hook size versus weight of yarn etc etc and with that being said let's get started all right Alrighty. so as i stated before i have a total of 81 chains with my worsted weight yarn and my size j hook the six millimeter hook now uh, the hook that I used, just to recap, the hook that I used for the finer weight of yarn, it was a size H, okay? So again, you might need to do some fiddling and finagling, and that's okay. So now, as I said, I already did my chains, so what we're going to do is we're going to link our chain to create a ring. Now, in order to do that properly. Initially, we do not want a twist, but we are going to add a twist. Now, in so many projects, it says, you know, to connect your chain into a ring, making sure that there's no twist. Well, we're going to be deliberately doing that with this project. Um, so what I like to do is 
to make sure that there's only one twist, I like to sort of scan through the entire chain, make sure it's not twisted, and then to incorporate the twist. So as you can see, I've got all of my little V's in a row looking nice and pretty, and we're going to go through the length of the chain, making sure that it's not twisted. as I'm doing right now. Now this isn't entirely crucial because you could add the twist later on, but I wanna show you how you can do it if this is the way that you choose to do it. Okay, so we have no twists going on. And so under normal circumstances, what you would do is without doing any twists, you would go underneath or, you know, underneath the top loop either or, you would go in and you would do your slip stitch. However, we need to incorporate that twist. So I'm gonna do that right now, just twisting it once. So one twist, that's all you need. All right, so now I'm going to do the slip stitch into that first stitch. And the first one's always the trickiest. There we go. All right, so do our slip stitch like so, and we are connected. Okay, so now because this is the, the granny stitch, I'm going to chain up three and into that same stitch, two more double crochets. All right, that is our first cluster. Get my little tail out of the way there. There we are. And then to continue along, chain one and skip the next three chains. My focus is being weird today, excuse me. Okay, so skip the next three chains, one, two, three, and into that fourth chain, do another cluster. So again, you could go underneath that top loop or you could go underneath both loops. Either or is really fine. It's pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. I like to go underneath both loops of the V. It does take a little bit more fiddling and finagling, but so I've got one, and two, and three. Now, honestly, I don't remember if I said it, but after doing your three double crochets, yes, you do want a chain one space in between. So forgive me if I didn't say that. So from here, chain one, and again, skip three chains, one, two, three, and then into that fourth chain, do another cluster. And for this first round, that is pretty much all you need to do until we reach the beginning, so to speak. Keep in mind, there is a twist in there, so we shall get to that. Now, because I'm going into the chains, it's a little bit more tricky, so I'm not gonna be doing all of them on camera, but this gives you the idea. So let's do another one, chain one and skip three chains, one, two, and three, into that fourth chain. Do your next cluster of three doubles. Now, if you find that the number of chains is too much for you, you can alter that down to two chains in between your clusters. And in order to do that, it would be a multiple of three plus one 
for your chain length. But I found that this worked out just fine for me. So what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to go all the way around. And when we are almost back to the beginning, I will show you the next step. So again, chain one, skip three chains into the fourth chain from the last you would do your new cluster. And I will be right back already. Alrighty, so I stitched my way all the way around. I just have one more cluster to go. So I just need to chain one and then skip the next three chains. So that would be one, two, and three, and then into that fourth chain, which is right next to our first cluster. That is deliberate. So let's do that last cluster together. And the neat thing about this particular pattern is that as fiddly as doing your clusters into the chain is, this is the hardest part. After this, it is easy street. The rest of the entire project, very, very, very simple and not fiddly at all. Okay, so now looking at our piece as a whole, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to untwist the twist to show you. So we have the untwisted piece like so. Now what we need to do is we need to incorporate that twist. That's why we had that twist at the beginning because we need to work along the bottom of where we were, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. So that being said, going to get the tail out of the way and we're going to continue along. Instead of continuing on in the normal fashion, we're going to be abnormal today. So chain one, and we're going to work into this chain three space with three more doubles for our next cluster. Now this is the sort of the second lap of the first round, if you will. So it's three doubles and then chain one and then three doubles into the next chain three space. And actually this is the second time that I'm filming this part of the tutorial because the first time I was cut short because, well, I film everything on my phone and my phone was saying there is an extreme emergency alert for really, really bad, 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 bad weather, but I'm nice and safe and dry and warm and toasty inside, and I hope that whoever is out there is driving carefully and taking precautions, but I'm fine. So we, we carry on and we stitch on. So really, that's all you do for the rest of this lap of the round. Just keep on keeping on. Now, what I was saying before about if you find that three chains is too much for you because you can see it's kind of loose. Personally, I did not find that to be a problem. I found initially when I was doing two chains that it was too scrunched compared to the rest of the piece. So I personally decided upon the three chains in between. Again, personal preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of this lap off camera and I will show you the, the join. And then quite frankly, that is the rest of the project. You know, just keep on keeping on in the same fashion all the way around and around and around and around. And so I'm going to do the rest of this lap off camera and I will be right back. Alrighty. Alright, so it turns out actually it's a tornado warning and I'm supposed to get into a uh, basement or a room with no windows. Well, I don't have a basement or a room with no windows, so I'm going to forge ahead because, well, I'm just crazy like that. Alright, so at any rate, uh, I'm almost done with the second pass and so I've just got one more cluster to go. 
with my three doubles. And my chain one. And then, oh, look, we've come full circle. And so to finish this, I'm going to slip stitch into the top third chain of our very first cluster. And there we go. Now to continue on, what I like to do is slip stitch into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, and then slip stitch into the chain space, like so. Now, to show you that we do in fact have a, a twist, it may not seem like we do, but we, we undoubtedly do. Um, what I'm gonna do is show you. All right, so we have our, our loop on the right, okay? So without, without turning the work, Not turning it, not turning it. No, no, no. See, I'm taking out the twist there, so I'm not turning the work at all. Oh, would you look at that? The loop is on the left. It was on the right. Let's keep going. My tail keeps getting in the way, I'm sorry. Bear with me. But I'm not twisting it. And, oh, look! The loop is on the right again. So that is how a Mobius works. There's no right side, wrong side, inside, outside. Nope, it's all the same side. Um, and there's actually a, a, a trick that you can do where if you take a, a length of paper a strip of paper and basically do what we did as far as you take one side and you flip it over, okay, and then you tape tape those two ends together and you will have, again, you'll have a Mobius strip. And then if you put your pen down and you're drawing a line and you don't lift your pen, if you keep going and going and going and going and going, you will have a pen mark on both sides of the paper and one continuous unbroken loop. Yes, and that is the wonders of abstract mathematics for you. All right, so let's try, you know, and, and do another one of these rounds and, you know, I'll show you how we can keep going from here. And it is so easy. You guys are going to love it. All right, be right back. Alrighty, so we had our connection here and our slip stitches. So from here, you just chain up three and then two more doubles. And this right now, this is how you do the rest of your project. In chain one, and then into the chain one space, three more doubles. And so basically, this is where we're starting. And the halfway mark, we're gonna have a cluster down here, facing downward, so to speak, you know, so, you know, we'll be into here. And, and so when you reach this point, you're at your halfway mark. And then when you keep going, eventually you will come back to where you started from, just like we did. And now you're going to want, as I said before, you're going to want quite a few of these rounds in order to get the length that you need in order for it to be a hood. Now, if you want to, you could have a shorter chain length and fewer rounds and go more for a cowl and less of a convertible aspect. Me, personally, I figure, you know, get, get more for your efforts, go the extra mile, go for that extra length, and 
have the ability to make it into a hood if you want it. You know, have the option open to you. And if you don't, well, you could just make it into more of a, a neck cowl and have it strictly for that purpose. That's fine too, you know, to each their own. But I love giving you guys options in every which way. That is what I like most, to give you options, flexibility with your creativity. That's how we grow as creative people. That, and of course, thinking outside of the box. It's very, very important to me. And a while back, I had done a similar project, which was not in the granny stitch. It was just all solid double crochets. And technically, yes, you could totally do that same style where it's just a solid piece just using a solid fabric of double crochets. In that case, you wouldn't need to have a, uh, a multiple count. You could just do however many chains you wanted to, but you would do it in exactly the same fashion. Um, but yeah, I, I did a piece before. It was more of a wrap shawl Mobius, um, but it wasn't in the granny stitch. And I thought, this would be fun. Give this a whirl, too. And so, yeah, right now, just doing my thing. And we haven't reached the halfway mark yet. But we are approaching it. So, just so that you can get the, the visual, I'm going to keep going. Well, I'm listening outside, and it appears that the the wind has already died down some, but it is still raining like something fierce, and that's okay. As long as the electric maintains itself, and I still have Wi-Fi, hey, I'm happy as a clam. In some respects, I would say I'm quite low maintenance. You know, if I've got electricity and Wi-Fi, hey, I'm good. All right. Almost there. So this, I would say, is one of those really, really, really great projects. If you want to throw on a movie and work on something that you don't really have to pay too much attention to, this is ideal. Also ideal for those last minute gift ideas where you're like, I have no idea what to give and I don't have a lot of time in which to do a full project. This is going to be a game changer for you guys. Now, let me just do one more. So you can see our tail from where we first started but we are on the opposite edge. See, look, that's where we need to get to. So right now we are at the halfway mark. Yes, we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the rest of this, this round, this lap off camera, and I will be, oddly enough, I will be down here, and then we will do the join, and uh, I'll meet back up with you. <laughs> Alrighty, back in a second. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with the, the second pass, if you will, and just need to do one more cluster and then do the join. And even though I've only done technically two rounds, we have the width of four, one, two, three, and four, even though we only did two rounds because it's two rounds one way, two rounds the other way. But that's the beauty of a Mobius. So right now, yeah, just got to do my slip stitch join into that first double of the first cluster. 
There we go. Like so. And like so. And then into that chain space. Now, as far as dimensions, well, you have a lot of leeway here. Now, as far as my previous two examples, the measurements from one side to the other, the width, okay, um, on one of them it was 18 inches, on another one it was about 20 inches. Basically, I would say just keep crocheting and doing rounds, full rounds, where you are connecting, okay? You know, if you're, if you're just going halfway, that isn't going to do you any good. No, a full round, you know, on one side and on the other, uh, as far as the number of full rounds, that is up to you. But for me personally, about 18 to 20 inches uh, did suffice. And yes, it does take quite a few rounds to get there. But um, yeah, so it would be the distance from this edge to this edge. Now, for instance, since we're working with a worsted weight yarn, let's count the number of quote-unquote rounds that you would need to do. So let's see, we've got one, two, actually, no, I've skipped one. Sorry, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and see, that's the, the halfway mark right here. So that'd be 14. So a total of 14 full rounds uh, for this particular example worked for me. However, you can do, you know, whatever sort of variation you would like to do. No problem. Um, I would say have fun with it, you know, experiment, try different yarn weights and different hook sizes, different, uh, different initial chain lengths. Have fun with it. Um, but above all, don't be afraid of trying something new. I always say that and I always mean it. So with that being said, you would just keep on keeping on. Uh, for me, you know, I just kept going until uh, my skein pretty much ran out, uh, especially with that green example from before. And to just finish up your piece, you know, just do your, you know, your initial slip stitch, snip off your yarn, sew in your end, and boom, you're good. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. Show your support because I appreciate your appreciation. And also in the description box, I'm going to put a link to the uh, previous example that I mentioned, which was more of a, a wrap, uh, shawl wrap kind of thing. I'll put a link down there as well. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and stay safe. Please take care of yourselves and each other. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody.